Hi there, are you deciding between computer science and computer engineering? Well, when I started college, I chose computer science because I thought software engineering is the holy grail. <laughs> but it turns out that the job market is like finding a needle in a haystack. Meanwhile, hardware engineers are thriving at companies like NVIDIA. So I went straight into the source to interview a core engineer at NVIDIA. So I would like to share the secrets I learned and how you can prepare for a career at NVIDIA. So what's behind the surge in demand for hardware engineers? It's all about machine learning. Think about machine learning like Batman. It needs a specialized gear to perform at its peak. Similarly, machine learning needs custom accelerators to perform those matrix multiplications at lightning speed. And that's why hardware engineers are demanded to build those specialized hardwares. And here is the best part. Hardware engineers are less likely to be replaced by AI. Why? Because most hardware code are proprietary, making it hard for AI to learn from them. For example, you can find production-ready Python or JavaScript code on the internet, but for hardware code, it's very difficult to find high-quality code. Therefore, the output quality of GPT on those hardware code are pretty sluggish. Part 2. What skills do you need to possess? There are three key skills, Verilog, Physics, and Communication. First, Verilog. What is Verilog? It is the hardware programming language engineers use to design chips. Just like software engineers use Python to code projects. Imagine getting a specification from a microarchitect asking you to design a 4-bit adder. What do you do? You must write Verilog. But what Verilog code look like? Let's give an example. The microarchitect might ask you to implement the following circuit, which is a 4-bit adder. How to do that? Code on the right is in Verilog. We take an input x, input y, and then output a sum. Because it's 4-bit, we need to stack 4 simple bit adder. And each of those single bit adder takes in 1-bit A and 1-bit B and perform an addition and then output the carry bit. On the left, this is the ripple carry adder that we just saw. It is simple and uses ON gates, uses less energy. But on the right, there is a more advanced adder that performs addition faster, but it uses N log N gates and more energy and more wires. So if the architect asks you to design a power-efficient adder, we might go for the ripple-carry one. Third, there is communication. Unlike software engineering, where you can build a website solo, building a chip involves a team of 600 plus members, from the microarchitect to RTL designer and to verification engineers. This highlights good communication because you need to pass the design doc back and forth. Part 3. What interview questions will you encounter? Well, there is no lead code in hardware engineering. Then, what will you be asked? First, there are statistics questions. For example, can you solve the 25 horses puzzle? What is the minimum number of races? You can identify the fast three horses. You can race up to five horses at a time. The first level is 25 horses, 
and then there might be 125 courses and then you might be asked about 625 courses. This requires high dimensional thinking and drawing out squares in the high dimensional space. Secondly, there are hardware questions. For example, design a finite state machine with some specifications. The state diagrams look like this and you need to be creative and meet the requirements. Thirdly is your past experience. Interviewer might ask what was your role in that project, how you communicate with other team members such as architect, verification engineers, and RTL designers. In conclusion, should you choose computer science or computer engineering? Here is a hint. Computer engineering requires a lot of hands-on experience with circuits and electronic boards which are more accessible in college, but software you can pick it up at any time and anywhere. Even if you are a software-only fan, it wouldn't hurt to take some hardware classes which can make you an even better programmer at parallel computing and optimizing your code for GPU or CPU. If you are a software engineer already, don't worry, you can stay connected to the realm of, of hardware technologies by attending conferences like SIGGRAPH, where NVIDIA CEO even showed up. In that way, you can stay ahead of the curve and keep up with the technologies. I am Faradon and wish you a pleasant day. Thank you so much for watching.